Would you like free audiobooks? Click the link in the description. Question 1. A patient with a severe burn is at risk for hypovolemia. Which assessment finding would be the earliest indicator of this complication? A. Increased heart rate. B. Decreased urine output. C. Altered mental status. D. Decreased blood pressure. Correct answer. A. Increased heart rate. Rationale. The earliest indicator of hypovolemia in a burn patient is an increased heart rate. This is the body's compensatory mechanism to maintain cardiac output amidst reduced blood volume. Other options are later signs of hypovolemia. Question 2. A nurse is caring for a patient with psoriasis. Which statement by the patient indicates a need for further teaching? A. I should keep my skin moist. B. I can use corticosteroid creams to reduce inflammation. C. I can expect to be completely cured with treatments. D. I should avoid triggers like stress and alcohol. Correct answer. C. I can expect to be completely cured with treatments. Rationale. Psoriasis is a chronic, autoimmune disease that can be managed, but not cured. This statement indicates a misunderstanding of the condition and a need for further education. Question 3. A nurse is preparing to administer medication to a patient with acne. Which medication requires the nurse to advise the patient to avoid pregnancy due to teratogenic effects? A. Tretinoin. B. Isotretinoin. C. Clindamycin. D. Benzoyl peroxide. Correct answer. B. Isotretinoin. Rationale. Isotretinoin, an oral retinoid, has significant teratogenic effects and women of childbearing age must avoid pregnancy while on this medication. A pregnancy test and enrollment in a risk management program are required before initiation. Question 4. Which finding would a nurse expect when assessing a patient with a suspected melanoma? A. A smooth, round, uniformly pigmented mole. B. A mole with irregular borders and varying colors. C. A rapidly shrinking pigmented lesion. D. A small, painless, red lesion that bleeds intermittently. Correct answer. B. A mole with irregular borders and varying colors. Rationale. Melanoma is characterized by moles with asymmetry, irregular borders, color variation, a diameter greater than 6 mm, and evolving nature. The description in B is most indicative of melanoma. Question 5. A nurse is educating a patient with a leg ulcer about wound care. What information is essential to include? A. You should keep the ulcer dry and exposed to air to promote healing. B. It's normal for the ulcer to increase in size before it starts healing. C. Use an antibiotic ointment and a moist dressing to promote healing. D. You should only change the dressing when it becomes soiled. Correct answer. C. Use an antibiotic ointment and a moist dressing to promote healing. Rationale. Moist wound healing environments promote faster healing and less pain. Antibiotic ointments can prevent infection. Keeping ulcers dry and exposed, or changing dressings only when soiled, could delay healing and increase infection risk. Question 6. A nurse is caring for a patient with a history of skin cancer. Which recommendation is most appropriate for this patient? A. Limit sun exposure between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. B. Use a tanning bed instead of direct sunlight. C. Apply a sunscreen with a minimum SPF of 15. D. Sun exposure is safe as long as it's not during midday. Correct answer. A. Limit sun exposure between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Rationale. The sun's rays are strongest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., so limiting exposure during these hours is key in skin cancer prevention. Tanning beds should be avoided as they also increase the risk of skin cancer. Question 7. During a skin assessment, 
a nurse notices a non-blanchable redness over a bony prominence in a bedridden patient. What is the appropriate nursing action? A. Document the finding as stage I pressure injury. B. Reassess the area in 24 hours. C. Apply a hydrocolloid dressing. D. Encourage the patient to remain in the same position for pressure relief. Correct answer. A. Document the finding as stage I pressure injury. Rationale. Non-blanchable redness over a bony prominence in a bedridden patient indicates a stage I pressure injury. Immediate documentation and intervention are necessary to prevent further deterioration. Question 8. A patient presents with a skin lesion. Which characteristic would suggest the need for further evaluation for basal cell carcinoma? A. A rapidly growing, tender, red nodule. B. A small, flesh-colored papule with a pearly appearance. C. A flat, brown, uniformly pigmented spot. D. A large, painful, purulent lesion. Correct answer. B. A small, flesh-colored papule with a pearly appearance. Rationale. Basal cell carcinoma often presents as a small, flesh-colored, pearly nodule. These lesions can be slow-growing and are typically found in sun-exposed areas. Question 9. A nurse is assessing a patient with cellulitis. Which finding is most consistent with this diagnosis? A. A hard, raised lesion with clear borders. B. A warm, red, swollen area with diffuse borders. C. A cluster of fluid-filled blisters. D. Dry, scaly patches of skin. Correct answer. B. A warm, red, swollen area with diffuse borders. Rationale. Cellulitis typically presents as a warm, red, swollen area with diffuse borders, often accompanied by fever and malaise. This bacterial skin infection requires prompt treatment with antibiotics. Question 10. A patient is being treated for scabies. Which instruction should the nurse include in patient education? A. Hot water should be used for washing all bedding and clothing. B. Scabies is only contagious after symptoms appear. C. Apply the prescribed cream to the face and scalp. D. Isolation is required until treatment is complete. Correct answer. A. Hot water should be used for washing all bedding and clothing. Rationale. Scabies mites can survive for a short time off the human body. Washing bedding, clothing, and towels in hot water is essential to prevent reinfestation and to control the spread of mites. Question 11. A nurse is providing education to a patient with atopic dermatitis, eczema. Which statement by the patient indicates a need for further teaching? A. I should take short, warm showers. B. Moisturizing immediately after bathing is important. C. I can use fragrance-free, mild soap. D. Scratching the lesions will help in removing dead skin. Correct answer. D. Scratching the lesions will help in removing dead skin. Rationale. Scratching can exacerbate eczema and lead to further skin damage and potential infection. Patients should be advised to avoid scratching and instead use moisturizers to alleviate itching. Question 12. A nurse is assessing a patient with suspected frostbite. Which finding is typically associated with this condition? A. Red, blistered skin. B. White or yellowish, waxy skin. C. Dry, scaly, and itchy skin. D. Warm, flushed skin with rashes. Correct answer. B. White or yellowish, waxy skin. Rationale. Frostbite is characterized by white or yellowish, waxy skin that feels firm or wooden to the touch. Immediate rewarming and medical attention are necessary to prevent permanent tissue damage. Question 13. In teaching a patient about wound care for a pressure ulcer, which statement by the nurse is most appropriate? A. Apply heat to the area to increase blood flow. B. Keep the wound dry and exposed to air. 
C. Use saline to clean the wound and apply a moist dressing. D. Rub the area vigorously to remove dead tissue. Correct answer. C. Use saline to clean the wound and apply a moist dressing. Rationale. Cleaning the wound with saline and applying a moist dressing promotes a healing environment. Heat, dryness, and rubbing can damage tissue and delay healing. Question 14. A nurse is educating a patient with herpes zoster, shingles, about managing the condition. Which instruction is most appropriate? A. You can apply topical antibiotics to the blisters. B. Use warm compresses to relieve pain and itching. C. Keep the rash covered to prevent transmission. D. Take aspirin for pain relief. Correct answer. C. Keep the rash covered to prevent transmission. Rationale. Herpes zoster can be spread to individuals who have not had chickenpox or the vaccine. Keeping the rash covered can help prevent transmission. Aspirin should be avoided due to the risk of Rye syndrome. Question 15. A patient is being treated for severe acne. Which dietary recommendation should the nurse provide? A. Increase your intake of fatty foods. B. Drink at least 2 liters of water daily. C. There's no need to change your diet. D. Limit dairy products and high glycemic foods. Correct answer. D. Limit dairy products and high glycemic foods. Rationale. Some studies suggest that dairy products and high glycemic foods can exacerbate acne. Recommending a balanced diet with limited intake of these foods can be beneficial in managing severe acne. Question 16. A nurse is caring for a patient with severe sunburn. Which intervention is most appropriate for initial management? A. Apply an ice pack directly to the sunburned skin. B. Encourage increased fluid intake. C. Use petroleum-based products to soothe the skin. D. Expose the skin to sunlight for short periods to promote healing. Correct answer. B. Encourage increased fluid intake. Rationale. Increased fluid intake is important in patients with severe sunburn to prevent dehydration. Direct ice application, petroleum-based products, and further sun exposure can worsen the condition. Question 17. Which statement by a patient with a new colostomy stoma indicates a need for further teaching? A. The stoma should be a healthy red color. B. I should report any skin irritation around the stoma. C. It's normal for the stoma to bleed a little when I clean it. D. I should expect the stoma to be swollen initially. Correct answer. C. It's normal for the stoma to bleed a little when I clean it. Rationale. While slight bleeding might occur due to fragile tissue, regular bleeding should be reported as it may indicate trauma or irritation. Proper stoma care involves gentle cleaning to prevent injury. Question 18. A patient with a history of venous stasis ulcers is being discharged. What is the most important instruction for the nurse to provide? A. Limit physical activity and keep the legs dependent. B. Apply heat to the legs to promote circulation. C. Wear compression stockings during the day. D. Massage your legs daily to improve blood flow. Correct answer. C. Wear compression stockings during the day. Rationale. Compression stockings help improve venous return and prevent fluid accumulation in the legs crucial in managing and preventing venous stasis ulcers. Question 19. Which instruction is essential for a nurse to provide to a patient taking isotretinoin for acne? A. Limit your exposure to direct sunlight. B. You can donate blood while taking this medication. C. Alcohol consumption is safe with this medication. D. You might not see results for several months. Correct answer. A. Limit your exposure to direct sunlight. Rationale. Isotretinoin can make the skin more sensitive to sunlight, increasing the risk of sunburn. Patients should be advised to limit sun exposure and use sunscreen. 
Blood donation and alcohol consumption are contraindicated during treatment. Question 20. A nurse is assessing a patient with impetigo. Which finding is commonly associated with this condition? A. Large fluid-filled blisters. B. Thick, crusted yellow lesions. C. Dry, red, scaly patches. D. Deep, painful ulcers. Correct answer. B. Thick, crusted, yellow lesions. Rationale. Impetigo typically presents as small vesicles that rupture and become covered with a thick, honey-colored crust. It is a highly contagious bacterial skin infection. Question 21. A nurse is providing postoperative care for a patient who has undergone a skin graft on the lower leg. Which action is most important in the immediate postoperative period? A. Encouraging ambulation to promote blood flow. B. Keeping the graft site elevated. C. Applying heat to the graft site to promote circulation. D. Massaging around the graft site to decrease swelling. Correct answer. B. Keeping the graft site elevated. Rationale. Elevation of the graft site is crucial to reduce edema and promote venous return, thereby aiding in the survival of the graft. Ambulation, heat application, and massage might disrupt the graft and are not recommended immediately postoperatively. Question 22. A patient with a suspected malignant melanoma is scheduled for a biopsy. Which statement by the nurse accurately explains the procedure? A. The biopsy will involve taking a sample from the center of the lesion. B. Will remove the entire lesion and surrounding skin. C. A small punch biopsy will be done to take a cross-sectional sample. D. Only the top layer of the lesion will be scraped off for the biopsy. Correct answer. B. Will remove the entire lesion and surrounding skin. Rationale. For a suspected malignant melanoma, an excisional biopsy that removes the entire lesion and a margin of surrounding skin is often performed. This approach helps in accurate diagnosis and staging. Question 23. A nurse is caring for a patient with a severe allergic reaction presenting with urticaria, hives. What is the priority nursing intervention? A. Apply a topical corticosteroid to the affected area. B. Administer prescribed antihistamine. C. Instruct the patient to use a tanning bed to reduce inflammation. D. Encourage the patient to scratch gently to alleviate itching. Correct answer. B. Administer prescribed antihistamine. Rationale. The priority in managing urticaria is to alleviate the allergic reaction, typically through the administration of antihistamines. Topical treatments may provide some relief, but they do not address the underlying allergic response. Question 24. During an assessment of a patient with scleroderma, which finding would the nurse expect? A. Hyperpigmented, loose skin. B. Hard, thickened skin. C. Greasy, scaly scalp. D. Multiple, flat moles. Correct answer. B. Hard, thickened skin. Rationale. Scleroderma characteristically causes skin to become hard and thickened. It's an autoimmune disorder that leads to fibrosis and may affect internal organs as well. Question 25. A nurse is teaching a patient about preventing recurrent candidal skin infections. Which statement by the patient indicates an understanding of the teaching? A. I should keep the affected area moist and warm. B. I will wear tight-fitting, synthetic clothing. C. I should dry my skin thoroughly after bathing. D. Using antibacterial soap daily will prevent infection. Correct answer. C. I should dry my skin thoroughly after bathing. Rationale. Candidal infections thrive in warm, moist environments. Drying the skin thoroughly, particularly in skin folds, helps prevent these conditions. Wearing loose, breathable clothing and avoiding excessive moisture are also important. Visit nursestudy.net for more nursing practice exams, care plans, and study guides.